help you don't get the sickness. My boy Kurt is a stay-at-home dad. Watching Disney movies he never had. His daughter digs through all the VHS. Crushing the classics in a princess dress. Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket. Making it real like Jiminy Cricket. Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedle dumb, he'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom. Leave some rays like Simba, or crack like the Beast dishes. He'll show you a whole new world. You won't need free wish. Stay at home, Disney Dad. for Beauty and the Beast, Enchanted Christmas. Add for Disney's 14th animated masterpiece, Peter Pan, quote, some of Disney's most beloved characters, like John and Michael. No one's beloved characters are John and Michael. No one says Michael from Peter Pan is their favorite Disney character. Hercules is coming. From Walt Disney Records, the presidents of the United States sing the theme song for George of the Jungle. Oh, these guys, okay. Okay, I grew up in the 90s and I loved every second of it, but when I look back, there are very few things that were popular in the 90s that make me go, yeah, that was a bit of a miss. This band, this band is one of them. They were huge for like one year because of their songs Lump and Peaches, and it's hard to explain, but you listen to it now, and you're almost mad that this band like fooled you, you know? I can't quite put my finger on it, but I remember the big rumor in the 90s that they didn't even own their own instruments, and like that somehow made their success cool. I don't know, maybe it gave other musicians hope, but let's be honest, no one knows a single song from these guys outside of Peaches and Lump, and you look back now, and those two songs, they're not good. Anyway, they sing the George of the Jungle theme song, okay. I feel like that's a stumble right out of the gates. So we'll see where we go. It's the feature presentation, scrolling blue logo, we start with an animated intro, there's an airplane that's flying over a beautiful jungle, and the animated plane hits an invisible mountain, and the crew never found their most precious cargo, a baby. That is so dark. I mean, imagine there's a plane crash and you can't find your baby. Like, there's no baby body, nothing. You just have to wonder if your own flesh and blood is out there laying somewhere cold and crying alone, starving to death, or being eaten by wild animals. George of the Jungle. 25 years later, it's cool. That missing baby's all grown up. He's got a ripping six pack and he's a complete bumbler. 25 vines away. His jungle is being threatened by a terrifying monster and it's a perky blonde who's like taking video selfies before it was a thing. We meet the three bad guys and while all these guys look familiar, like the actors, I can only place the big guy from the epic show Parker Lewis Can't Lose. The narrator is annoying and he's also like a famous movie trailer voiceover guy. The three white bad guys, and the blonde have three African guides who they boss around, great. That night around the campfire, they tell a story of the legend about the white ape who lives in the jungle, screaming for a mate he'll never find. The blonde lady named Ursula leans forward. That, that story got her going. Time for a waterfall cold shower girl. Now monkeys play the bongos to alert George that intruders are in his jungle. George does a header into another tree. The narrator is interacting with the on-screen characters. It's gonna be one of these movies. The main bad guy is Ursula's fiance and he's so one-dimensional. He keeps making the same lame rich guy jokes over and over. Then a lion emerges and he runs away like he just bolts leaving Ursula alone to die. As he runs away though, he trips and he knocks himself out. The lion is gonna eat Ursula, but the George swings in for the save, misses Ursula, and eats tree number three. He slides down and then he wrestles the lion, but like pro wrestler wrestles it. Like he bounces off a rubber tree and clotheslines the lion. Then he drops an elbow and calls it a pile driver and I had to hit stop and go get a drink. How did they allow this to happen? I don't care how little you know about pro wrestling. No one ever confuses an elbow drop with a pile driver. Stone Cold Steve Austin wasn't paralyzed by an elbow drop. He was paralyzed by a pile driver, a move that was banned from pro wrestling shortly after because he dropped someone on their head. But I digress. After an elbow drop, the lion gets up and goes to attack Ursula. But this time, George swings, snatches her in his arms, and he keeps swinging. And this time, he sends Ursula headfirst into a tree, knocking her out. That was kind of funny. He just shrugs, and he keeps on swinging with this unconscious woman, and they exit the frame. Now this is where I was going to drop a witty quip about Brennan Fraser and how he got Me Too'd back in the day because I remember seeing a headline uh, but then I googled it and oh no, he did not get Me Too'd 
Me too He me too someone else. Like he was a victim of unwanted sexual advances and touching and busted open a huge conversation of why sexual violence against men is always played for laughs and how there's very little sympathy, if any, and even less support. Terry Crews also came forward and claimed something similar happened to him and no one cared. No one really ran with the story or talked about it. How sad. Wow. Okay, um, yeah, George of the Jungle, a monkey makes fart noises. I... Brendan Fraser and Terry Crews were two of the lone male voices trying to be heard during the Me Too movement. Crews got even less sympathy because he's a giant with big muscles and he was told he should have just beaten his abuser up. Unreal. George of the Jungle. George takes this unconscious woman back to his treehouse and quote, after a night of feverish fantasies, she wakes up and a gorilla with glasses serves her breakfast. She passes out again and George starts dabbing her with a cold cloth trying to revive her. And when he gets to her chest, he says, there's something funny about this fella. The monkey tells George, that's a woman. And now that Disney owns Star Wars, they should end every new Star Wars movie with that three second clip, right? Like all the nerds sitting through the credits hoping for that quick teaser. And instead they get Brennan Fraser holding a blonde and the girl looks into the camera and says, that's a woman. Yeah, back on track. Suck it, Star Wars nerds. Ursula wakes up and gives George a flower and asks to be taken back home. The gorilla grunts and like points down. I don't know what's happening. George obliges and calls Shep, which is a CGI elephant and it acts like a dog. And when George whispers something to Shep, Shep wraps Ursula around the waist with his trunk and lifts her up. Uh, Brennan Fraser and the CGI dog elephant play catch. George and Ursula ride the CGI elephant in hopes of finding her fiance, but they can't. They give the elephant a giant dog bone, but then the narrator says that's too much. So then it disappears. Just, just no. They hear jungle drums. George talks to a monkey. The monkey doesn't have any friends, which is a great lesson. Because I imagine if you've made it this far into George of the Jungle without doing something else, there's a good chance you also don't have any friends. So yeah, the monkey doesn't have any friends. A lion comes. The way they superimpose the, the monkey into the same shot as the lion looks super fake, but I get it. The monkey scares off the lion and then he has friends. Lesson learned. He must have scared off the plot as well because it's long gone and I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting annoyed by this movie. George teaches Ursula to swing from a vine by tucking it between her legs which is played off as innocent, but you know, George doesn't swing with it between his legs, so I feel like this was an unnecessary detail that only perverts would notice. George does a header into another tree, and is that number five? George watches Ursula sleep, and he asks the gorilla to help Ursula, to help make Ursula George's mate. I can't, I can't. George tries to catch, he tries to teach George to kiss and my thumb hovers over the stop button. Will this be the first movie I just tap out like I don't finish? I mean, the Pooh movies are fun to rag on. Home in the Range seems somewhat important because it was like a major movie and I want to see all the cartoons. Cars 2, I had to watch because I needed a movie that took place in Japan to complete my Epcot tour. But this, I have no reason to finish George of the Jungle. But now they're under a waterfall and Ursula's in a white tank top. So, all right, they got a minute. Let's see what happens. The Shaggy... Oh, the Shaggy cover of Let's Make Love or Let's Get It On, whatever starts playing, and George starts giving her the elevator with his eyes, and I'll be honest, the weird sexual tension scenes are the only interesting thing in this movie, in like a this wouldn't fly these days kind of a way. Montage of them flirting. Hey, Ursula, you're engaged, honey. Yeah, yeah, I see a six pack. You're engaged. Next morning, fiance, whose name is Lyle, and his crew are coming dangerously close to George's treehouse. Lyle falls in elephant poop, and one of the African guides breaks the fourth wall and explains to us, the viewers, that that was a classic scene of the bad guy falling into poop, and now comes the part where they all tip their heads back and laugh, and then they do. And you know, this Ferris Bueller stuff only works when the movie is clever. When the movie is dumb, it's thinly veiled. Hey, this movie is supposed to be bad. We're doing this on purpose gimmick, but it never works. Those are not clever asides. They never make a bad movie good. Lyle is reunited with Ursula. She gets mad and says, quote, I remember what you did when that lion came. And I'll be honest, lady, I'd rather hear about what you were doing when George came. They see a gorilla talk and Lyle's henchman tries to shoot it, but George jumps in front and takes the bullet or whatever. Now we jump and he's being flown to a hospital while the rest of them go to jail and Lyle gets picked out of a police lineup because he's, he's the only white guy. And that's, I mean, that's kind of funny in a racist kind of way. Lyle's main two henchmen got away and they want to kidnap the talking gorilla so they can get rich with it, which is a much better idea than shooting it. In a limo back in town in like the city, Ursula calls her mother, who thinks Ursula must be sick, because she asks, how's your temperature? What color is your tongue? And how's your, mm-hmm? And Ursula replies, 
regular. This, no one sat through the final cut before this was released. There's no way this got through. George keeps sticking his head out the limo window like a dog. That's kind of funny, but now since he's in the city and not in the jungle, he hits his head on something like a street sign as the limo drives by. And this scene is almost as funny as when they do it in Hereditary. Up on the roof, Ursula kisses George goodnight. The narrator says, her fiancé is in jail. And from there we go to the next morning when Ursula's friend arrives and George is standing in the living room naked. The woman stare at his junk. I'm not making this up. This is happening in George of the Jungle, this Disney movie. They gawk at his junk. There's a shot from behind between George's legs and that's where their sight line is. That's the joke. Ursula eventually covers him with, quote, a big book. And her friend Bet Betsy says, I see why he's king of the jungle. Because he has enormous junk. Is that the joke? Why, why am I doing this to myself? I wanted to watch movies with my daughter and this is my life now. Betsy reminds her that tomorrow is actually Ursula's engagement party and Lyle is in jail. So George puts on a dress and I mean that's kind of funny in a weird way but then she takes him out into town in this dress and he starts hanging from street lights. She buys him an Armani suit. Ursula says the city is a different kind of jungle. Mm. Then Ursula's mom sees them walking together and she knows something's up. Back on Ape Mountain all the animals miss George. The elephant pees on a tree and the gorilla is mad for some reason. Ursula's mom calls Ursula and George answers the phone and screams into it. Ursula tells him to stay inside once she's gone and then he argues with the narrator about his ability to listen to her and just stay home. Ursula's father shows up as a surprise for their engagement party that isn't happening. Brandon Fraser looks like WWF's Edge. He leaves in the apartment, he eats McDonald's on top of the bus and pervs into a window of a bunch of gals dancing. Then he walks across the historic Full House Bridge and you know, I never thought about it, but if you asked me to describe my perfect afternoon, while on the bridge, he sees a construction worker, great pre-drone aerial footage. It's the Bay Bridge, and this idiot parasailer got caught, and he's dangling from the bridge. George saves him, then he gets sucked into the air because he grabbed onto the parasail, and he flies into a boat. The bumbler music does not ever get a break in this movie. Ursula's mom sees Ursula and George hugging on TV. Back in the jungle, the henchmen tranquilize the gorilla as he's playing chess, and as he's falling asleep, he tells the toucan to go find George. The narrator says the bird made a bird line to San Francisco. In a convertible, they practice jungle yelling and Ursula confronts her parents and says she doesn't want to marry Lyle anymore. Ursula's mom says, no, while in the jungle, you must have caught one of those viruses that make nice girls confused. What? I, I can't even wrap my dirty mind around what that could possibly mean. They show Ursula the wedding cake and George swings through it and there's cake on everyone and don't you dare sully the epic moment from the November Rain video. I'm gonna turn this off people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. Last chance. I have to be getting close to the end. I have to be. During the party, George is outside chasing horses while all the ladies drool over him. Ursula tells George to take a hike. Oh no, Ursula's mom tells George to take a hike. But then the bird shows up and he has to save the gorilla. Home stretch. Here comes the big misunderstanding. He's gonna leave with the bird to save the gorilla and Ursula's gonna think he left because he doesn't like her and she's gonna get hurt feelings and almost marry Lyle after all until a hilariously unrealistic circumstance brings them all back together for the final scene where the misunderstandings are exposed and Lyle ends up in a horse trough as she swings away in her wedding dress with George. Let's see how close I get. I'm wrong. She realizes she's actually in love with George and runs away while her mother gets drunk and her father looks at her mother and says, you're a pain in the ass. I was way off. Back on Monkey Island, George arrives home. He mailed himself there in a crate like Dracula. And he looks into the camera when he gets out and says, next time, George gets bigger box. And at this point, I'm convinced that's a sex joke because I assume everything in this movie is just a juvenile double entendre that they think the parents will laugh at and the kids won't get, but it's actually playground level humor that the kids will totally get and family movie night is now awkward. In the jungle, the two bumbler henchmen are still transporting this gorilla in a cage with wheels. Like how long has this been? Okay, the narrator says it's been two days. One, the big guy from Parker Lewis is a good actor, but he sucks in this movie. This movie, this script is bringing everyone down. Again, it's like no one is trying on purpose. So when people call them on this crappy movie, they could be like, hey, we were trying to make it bad on purpose. That's why it's funny, but it's not. If I, okay, if I haven't given Brendan Fraser props yet, dude is super ripped for this role. Good on you. The gorilla nappers went in a circle and they end up back at the treehouse and they argue with the narrator and do the whole, you started and I did not, you did too, you did not. And you know what? Ah! 
want to throw myself down the stairs at this point. I hate this movie. Now the thugs beat up George and George kicks them both in the genitals. Then they twist George's nipples. This is the new worst Disney movie I have ever seen. Episode what, 124? George beats them up. The gorilla farts on them. The elephant fires the toucan into one of the guy's butts like a dart. Then they hammer the other guy with coconuts. They're about to shoot George when Ursula swings through the scene and kicks the bad guy. Just mercy kill this movie. Oh my God, end this. Roll credits. But no, George spins his fist like the propeller and he punches one guy so fat so hard he circles like Benny Hill for honest to god 36 seconds George carries Ursula out and Lyle shows up because he broke out of jail or something and this pull the plug he says he's gonna marry Ursula George gets mad but then seven hired mercenaries like snare George as Lyle carries Ursula away the monkey drums on drums and signals to all the other jungle animals to come help and they do I spilled my coffee all the bad guys end up in the gorilla cage where the elephant pees on them Lyle and Ursula fall down a pit and end up in a river and there's got to be a waterfall and I think there is but there's a boat at the bottom so George is swinging there as fast as he can he gets attacked by a snake that goes nowhere so he keeps going why was that necessary what oh my god Lyle is now a priest and he's trying to marry Ursula on the boat and she tells him to get a grip and then the dinghy goes over the rapids George gets the biggest head of steam possible and swings on purpose this time into a tree which breaks and then it falls and then he uses that broken tree to pull Ursula out of the boat and in the dark Lyle accidentally marries the gorilla oh snap then the gorilla forces himself on Lyle in the boat yeah Take that, Lyle. You weren't a good person, and now you're getting raped by a gorilla. Next scene, George marries Ursula, and half the attendants are human, and the other half are animals. Montage of everyone partying. The elephant dances. The monkey gets drunk. Her friend Betty grinds the photographer. Ursula and George leave on an elephant, and the elephant's butt says, just married in white paint, and it's, it's still not over. They're wrapping it up, though. They now have a son, and it swings into a tree like his dad. The narrator asks George how he grew up to be king of the jungle, and George says, just lucky, I guess. Then they cross the last line they could possibly cross, and they spoof the intro to the Lion King as George holds up his son on Pride Rock, and the credits start, and then the gorilla says, don't you want to find out what happened to me? No! Not at all, but they force it on us. He became a Vegas lounge singer. Sweet, merciful Jesus, it's over. Ursula was Leslie Matt, who was apparently married to Judd Apatow. Lyle was Thomas Hayden Church, the guy from Wings. And oh, oh, yeah, he was the Sandman. And speaking of Sandman, if you could stay awake during this absolute disaster, you, my friend, are a better man than me. Mm. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you.